Hello viewers, you're welcome to Experience Chat on XPB TV Africa. Today we are meeting a well-respected man. We are meeting a real estate developer. We are meeting someone who works hand in hand with the federal government uh, just uh, for housing purpose. We are meeting a barrister. Experience Chat. Not just that, we'll be looking uh, more into his political ambition, but I want you to know that uh, we have barrister Kennedy Onoche Kanma here with us. He is a Labour Party candidate uh, for uh, Delta North Sanitarial District. You're welcome, uh, Barista Kennedy Onoche Kama. Thank you very uh, before much. Before this time, he had to give me the right pronunciation of the name. I was pronouncing Onoche. Then he said he's Onoche. So I hope I'm pronouncing yeah, that right now. now. All right. So uh, we understand deeply that uh, you have a strong uh, love for your people and for that reason you are going for uh, the position of the senator for the uh, delta north senatorial district uh, we have some questions uh, that we really need to ask you you understand that the principle of democracy is founded on the people and for that reason the people have a greater say but we observe that many leaders these days they don't, they don't really understand what democracy is all about before we, we go into asking you that, I want to know deeply uh, what underlying values and beliefs moved you to want to co come out for this prestigious and uh, messen messaging position uh, for this senatorial district. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I would say that uh, what moved me yeah. to aspire to become the senator representing Delta North Senatorial District is really the things that have been affecting Nigerians all over the country. Okay. That is the effect, the debilitating effect of bad governance. Mm. You will see that people are crying. People are really, really crying. When you listen to people, you see that if you are lucky to be feeding once a day in this country you're a big man the pains people pass through and you look at the causes of those pains you realize that those pains are totally unnecessary because as a country we have the capacity we have the ability we have the mental resources to create for ourselves a great nation but it is being grossly mismanaged mm. because of the quality and caliber of people who have been handling things in the past. And you find that Nigerians at a particular period of time started groaning, started crying out. Previously, these things happen and everybody keeps quiet. It affects each and every one of us. It affects everybody, but we all keep quiet. And people endured it, believing that there's nothing that can be done about it. However, at a point in time, people started getting encouraged. Don't leave your country for the people who have no interest of the people of the country at heart. Yeah. I am part of those people who believe that uh, it has gotten to a point where we can no longer leave our country, the affairs of our country, to be managed by what we call uh, professional politicians, <laughs> people whose life work is just to do politics. It has gotten to a time when everybody must become involved. Mm. There's a statement that triggered off my interest okay. in politics. He said, I think it was credited to Aristotle. He says that when people who ordinarily are wise refuse to be involved in the rulership in their place, they suffer the rules of fools. That's and true. you see it every day That's happening. True. That's true. You know that this person, you know him, you see him every day, you know that this person has no capacity. You know that this person cannot do anything for your people. But he's there and we are all following him almost blindly because he happens to be uh, the anointed person or whatever criteria they have used in the past to decide who occupies position of leadership in the country. Now, Nigerians are saying that that type of lifestyle is enough. We've had enough of it and people are stepping forward and i'm one of those people who stepped forward that's very beautiful uh, we also understand that uh, political manifestos to nigerians 
have become mass statements, which is not supposed to be mass statement from candidates. Well, you will not blame Nigerians. It's as a result of uh, uh, the bad government governance over time. What exactly do you intend to do for uh, the good people of Delta North Senatorial District? And of course, by extension to Nigeria, to Delta State and Nigeria at large. That is what we want to know. Okay. Uh, first, let me talk about manifestos, the one for the party. Uh, when you uh, look at Labour Party and the way Labour Party evolved in the recent past, you will see that it is it evolved from a movement spearheaded by P2B. Uh, when you listen to the things he says about his dreams for the country, they tally with my dreams for the country. What we are looking at for is to have in Nigeria that the Nigerian is respected at home. The Nigerian is appreciated at home and respected abroad. Mm -hmm. Presently, we are sometimes disrespected abroad. We are killed. We are chased from places to places. And all these things happen because of the wrong way we've handled things in the past. Now, our manifesto, the manifesto of the Labour Party, is focused on the human beings. You know, when we talk about the Labour Party, we say uh, Papa, Mama, Pekin, we say it's the party where you see human beings. Yeah. It is not just a matter of logo. It's not just a matter of... Uh, it's not just a matter of uh, just slogan. As a party presently, based on the movements, we are actually very interested in the emancipation of the Nigerian person from the bondage that other Nigerians have consciously or unconsciously. Sometimes I say unconsciously because I want to give them uh, give them benefit of doubt. Yes, but ordinarily, it looks as if it's a conscious and deliberate effort to subjugate the remaining of us into bondage. Yeah, now, that is what exactly is moving us. That's why we are saying that in this particular dispensation, what rules us, what drives us, is the interest of the people. Uh, well, well, that's that's very true. Uh, you you made reference to personal development and capacity, and I agree with you that personal development and personal capacity translates to national development. But let's come down to the senatorial district. What is that thing uh, about you that makes you feel that yes, you are capable of leading these good people? What is that good thing about you that feel, makes you feel like yes, you really want to represent the interest? of your people and not necessarily uh, your own interest? Uh, I think, uh, first, I'll take part of the questions you asked me yeah. in the uh, the first one. Yeah. Then when I finish it, I will get back to this Zero. one you asked. Zero. You asked me, what is my what is my manifesto for the people? And I started off and I talked first only about that of the uh, Labour Party. Yeah. Because as a Labour Party candidate, it is part of my primary duty to drive the manifesto of Labour Party. So what the Labour Party has as its manifesto forms part of my manifesto. But as an individual yeah. who is coming out from Delta North, representing Delta North Senatorial District at the Senate, I have things that are crowding in my mind. I know of several things that I have wanted done in the past that I now say that now is my opportunity to get them done. Several of them have been interested in the security of the people. I don't want, I as a person don't want to live in a country where you are not able to freely move around, where you take a decision to travel, it is a major thing to think just to go by road. Any person who can afford it now flies. People who cannot afford it are left on the road. But it's not even the roads that are not safe. Everywhere is unsafe. The houses are not safe, the farms are not safe, no place is safe. So I'm interested in the security of the country. And I believe that as a party, Labour Party is committed to work with that security. Yes, they say it's a difficult challenge, but there's nothing that is difficult. That when people put a committed attempt to rectify it, that they will not make progress in it. So I believe that with like-minded people, the problem of insecurity will be solved in Nigeria when Labour Party becomes the ruling party. Then I also have interest in poverty alleviation. Because in Nigeria here, no matter what you earn, once you start doing a little above average, you have dependence. Definitely. Uh, 
And sometimes it can be overbearing because you can, you know, the type of statement people will call you with. You are just helpless. Somebody calls you this night and tells you that he has not eaten yesterday, he has not eaten day before yesterday. Throughout this day, he has not eaten and he's about to go to sleep without food again. There is nothing. You must be moved. And you realize that you don't have the capacity to attend to every other person. If the government is doing what it's supposed to do, the quantity of that burden will be reduced. And that is why we are interested in seeing that we work on poverty alleviation. And poverty alleviation is not giving people handouts. This that uh, we have done empowerment. Yeah. They came in here again. That is not it. If you put in the conditions for people to thrive, my Nigerians will thrive. Definitely. We thrive in any part of the world. If you go to every part of the world, you see that Nigerians are thriving. Why are they not thriving so much at home? It's because of the condition of the governance of the people. If the governance of the people is done properly, Nigerians at home will also thrive. Now, all we are asking for is that the people who lead us, they should open up their brain. That is why they put you there. You should be able to think. There are several things that you will do. People will start making money on their own. They will not be depending on other people. And if we are able to achieve that, create the conditions for people to thrive on their own, you will see that Nigeria will skyrocket because the creativity, the ability is resident in us naturally. We are resilient people. That is why you see that when we go to any place, we excel. But when we stay at home, we look as if we are people who don't know what we are doing. It is the structure of our government. Okay. And that is what Nigeria... They have not identified it completely. All they just know is that we are not satisfied with what we are seeing. And then I said, put it. So people who know what the problem is are not ready to go in there to go and solve that problem. Okay. So, that uh, so uh, Barista Onyeche, uh, do you believe in human capital development? Yes, of course. I am personally interested in education. I believe that training, training yeah. is important in everything you do. If you train the people, something that would have taken them 10 years to achieve, they can achieve it in one year. So when you're talking about human capacity development, if our people are developed and trained in such a manner that they're able to use their capacity maximally, you'll find that it will be for the benefit of the country, it will be for the benefit of the people. It will be... Like when I talk about economy, so I say that when you are talking about the economy of the nation, everything that pertains to that nation, if the people are growing, the nation will grow. If the people are not growing, the nation is not going anywhere. Oh, that is true. why you look at sometimes, some people will say Nigeria is a rich country. I say Nigeria is not a rich country. Fa, 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 fa. Nigeria is not a rich country. Nigeria is a poor country. A country is as rich as its people. If its people is rich, the country is rich. If the people are poor, the country is poor. Yeah. So Nigeria is a poor country. We are working to make Nigeria a rich country. That's what we are aiming for now. Yeah, uh, well, um, Nigeria witnessed the political revolution uh, in the last uh, few months. Uh, we've seen how Nigerians have been able to open their eyes more than ever before to, say, to understand that uh, there is nothing like a dominant party in Nigeria, but there is something like a leader who is interested in the growth of, of the country or his people uh, specifically. What is your expectation, even as we have so many speculations about Labour Party and, uh, you know, political counterpart? Of course, the political, political atmosphere is not a friendly one. But what do you expect uh, come 2023 for you uh, contesting for the position of, of the Delta North Senator District and also Nigeria and the Labour Party uh, as, an, as a big party on its own? What, what is your anticipation? Uh, I am very hopeful, you know, just like we said before, yeah. that everything boils down to the people. We are lucky in this generation that, you know, first, uh, I would say that people woke up the youths because the youths were sleeping. Now, they woke up the youths, the youths were obviously sleeping. But however, as soon as the youths woke up, they went to wake up the elderly ones. They went to wake up the younger ones. They are even waking up generation unborn. They are waking up everybody. So if you are meeting people now and you see, see, see people who are still talking about the old parties like PDP or APC, they have not yet been woken up. They are still sleeping. But I can assure you that there is somebody who has taken it as his life duty to go and wake up that person until he wakes up. And I'm telling you that between now and whatever time the election is going to hold, those people you think that are still sleeping, they will wake them all up. Because Nigeria is tired of staying on the paths of backwardness. There's somebody who likes it. In fact, even people who they give that money to, all this money they used to bribe people before to do elections, even the people they give that money to, even themselves don't like themselves. 
because they look at it, they take that money, they put it in, and they see the consequences of their action. A few weeks, a few months, a few years down the line. And they realize, man, I did wrong. This thing I've done is not right. Well, because they didn't know before. So when you talk about the revolution that is happening, the major thing I call it is the great awakening. It is something, that's why people are confused about it. Yeah. You can't hold it. You can't. Somebody will tell me that uh, this place, they are still not uh, obedient. I say, just leave it. It's a matter of time. Somebody will get there. And once the person hears the message, that this thing we are talking about is not because of anybody. It is not even about P2V. It is not about Kamma. It's not about any person. It is about yourself. What type of country do you want to live in? What type of life do you want to live? Do you want to live a life of beggarliness? Do you want to live a life where you are subjugated? Do you want to live a life where your life is meaningless? Or you want to be part of a new Nigeria that is being created now, starting from 2023? There's nobody who does not want to live in a good life. There's nobody. Nobody wants to be trekking across the Sahara Desert. You know how far that is. You know how difficult it is. In fact, that is something that will also tell you something about the Nigerian character. That people look at that Sahara Desert and use leg to cross it. Now, why would somebody go and cross that Sahara Desert if the conditions is going to pursue another man's land is in his country? Mm -hmm. That is just what... So everybody, it resonates with everybody. There's no magic about it. It's just they are hearing the truth for the first time. And they are hearing it from people who they can believe. And because they are hearing it and believing it, that is what is driving people out from the streets. Well, uh, Nigerians have got into that point where we are not just looking at a political party, we are not just looking at the tribal sentiments or whatever social class. We are looking for a leader who can actually elevate the people and obliterate so many problems that we are facing, starting from poverty, uh, insecurity, amongst others. We've been hearing from Barista Kennedy Onoche Kanma. He is a Labour Party candidate contesting for the Delta North Senator Senatorial District. And we've heard everything he has said so far. Makes so much sense. Uh, we are not just looking at just his party. We are looking at his individual. He's someone who has contributed uh, to the lives of so many people, uh, a real estate developer. And also he has worked hand in hand with the federal government, uh, a housing commission and he is a barrister, a legal practitioner. He knows what the law says, and we've been hearing from him directly. It has been Experience Chats on XPB TV Africa with Barrister Kennedy on a chair. Let's hear your last words before we call it a wrap on the program today. My people, the only thing I can say is that uh, our future is in our hands. Our future is in our votes. If we Take the bold step, look at what is right, and do what is right. And when I say do what is right, I actually mean vote Labour Party. Because in Labour Party, you have people who are interested in doing what is right. So please vote for me, Ken Kanma, as your senator for Delta North Senatorial District. Vote for P2B as uh, the president of the country, and for other Labour Party aspirants in Delta North. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Barista Kennedy. Yes, your vote counts and you should use your votes. It's going to those days where you say that uh, your votes don't count. Go out there and use it because that is your power. That is all you've got to remove those egocentric leaders who only care about their selfish interests. My name is Egbeji Goss from Miss Iviogene. Thank you for watching. This is XBB TV Africa. Do watch and subscribe to our ch channel and turn on the notification bell because we'll be having uh, more of this with Barista Kennedy. So if you want to get it, you should turn that bell on so you get it. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.